Welcome to Tax Tips Tuesdays with Patrick and Reigns, a local accounting firm here in Jacksonville, Florida. In the studio with me is Tim, and joining me via phone is Mark. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Hey, yeah, happy to be good. here. Thank you. So, first of all, tell us about Patrick and Reigns, the accounting firm. Oh, hey, happy to do so. We are a full-service uh, CPA firm. We were established in Jacksonville about 35 years ago. Our main office is on 4029 Atlantic Boulevard. Uh, we perform everything from tax compliance, tax consulting, financial statements from audits, reviews, compilations, and it really just general business consulting as well. We, we try to focus in uh, five areas. That's the logistics and transportation, uh, medical practices, construction, restaurants and hospitality, uh, as well as not-for-profits and manufacturing. Glad to have you here with us. Tax day is coming up when? April 15th. April 15th. And you are here because you're going to do a program on a weekly basis counting down to April 15th. So we're going to just get started. Anything interesting in the new tax law other than the third stimulus payment? We've had three major tax tax bills, tax-related bills in the last year to focus on the pandemic. And there's been a little bit of a tax law in each one of those. So the probably the second most popular after the stimulus payment in the most recent legislation is to make the first $10,200 of unemployment compensation tax-free. So it's excluded from your tax return, and that would be double that if you have two earners on a married return. Um, at this point, the IRS is not really clear on the rules that they're going to have to deal with that because it just passed about 10 days ago. So they're working on a fix that will possibly allow them to go ahead and amend a return that may have already been filed in which you did not claim, claim this exclusion. Uh, the software people that help us prepare returns as well as you for the online services uh, are also working to do that until there's a formal explanation they don't know what to do either. So we're actually recommending clients that have this situation to delay filing until they get it worked out because that may be the faster way to get your additional benefit rather than waiting for the IRS to fix it for you. And were there any other laws that we might have missed? Yeah, um, a lot of people talk about the CARES Act because it was what provided the PPP loans uh, for a lot of businesses, especially restaurants. Um, however, there's another little tip inside the CARES Act. It was that the IRS is going to provide a charitable deduction for folks that don't itemize. So even if you do take the standard deduction, you can claim another little portion for your deduction for 2020, only for cash contributions, though, to qualify charitable contributions. You can make uh, up to a $300 cash contribution to qualifying charities and this amount it will not qualify for like donated property, like your Goodwill or your Salvation Army. And uh, up to $300, if you're married, uh, but you're going to file separate, then they split that in half. So it's only going to be $150. Really, it's a great benefit because you still get to take the $300 deduction and you still get to take the standard deduction. From what you just said, I would be in that category. I don't itemize deductions, but I make a lot of charitable contributions to my church. Mm -hmm. So I would fall into this category? Yeah, because what the IRS is going to do is it's going to at least give you the $300. You know, it may not be the total amount that you've given to charity, but it's, you know, it, at least something is better than nothing. And it's a great $300 deduction that you would not have gotten otherwise. Absolutely. And I don't give to a charity just to get back. Mm -hmm. So, but that is great. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. That's wonderful. We're on to the next question. What if I didn't get one of the stimulus payments? Do I miss out? And how do I get it now? Uh, no, these are all actually considered advanced credits toward the 2020 tax return. So if you did not get the proper amount of any one of the three that have, have happened, of course, the third one is just now in process, you'll be able to reconcile that on your 1040 for 2020. Uh, there is a recovery rebate credit that will go on line 30 of your tax return to be able to reconcile what you did get and what you should have gotten. And that's quite often the case because some of the rebates were based on the 2018 income, some on the 2019 income, and some will be based on the 2020. 
So if one or the other is better, you may, in fact, be able to get additional credit when you file your 2020 return. I'm nervous about cybersecurity and don't use direct deposit, but I know it delayed my stimulus payment. Uh, Should I do it? Yeah, um, honestly, the direct deposit, it it really is the safest. It's the most accurate, and it is the fastest way, uh, as well as electronically filing, but just to choose the option direct deposit. Direct deposit means the refund is going to go directly into your bank account, um, and and it's free. There's not a charge for that. You're going to get the money much, much quicker. Uh, I would say that 8 out of 10 um, folks who are getting refunds are using the direct deposit. It's simple. It's fast. Um, and it really, truly is secure. Um, you know, recall that about 98% of all Social Security and other veterans payments, you know, out of millions of folks are being deposited now through direct deposit. Um, so it really is a safe way to go. If you're just joining us, this is a new segment called Tax Tips Tuesdays in preparation for Tax Day, April 15th. And in the studio with us are Mark and Tim. They're with Patrick and Reigns, a local accounting firm here in Jacksonville, Florida. And so they are tackling some questions that we think you have and you want to tune in every week at 4 p.m. on Tuesdays uh, for tax tips. Our next question is, why is electronically filing my return so important? We've learned much this year because of the pandemic that the ways of doing business have changed and the IRS had to do so as well. Many of their people even now are not back to work. And if you depend on the mail, you're depending on an individual to open it up and process it, scan it, enter it into a computer, whatever it may be. They are approximately 6 million pieces of mail behind in getting them open. So that's a huge inbox that's not yet processed. We're seeing notices for returns that should have been processed six months ago that have not yet been handled. Uh, So it becomes a a real issue in terms of timing because the IRS computer thinks you're not in compliance when in fact you are. Uh, So we recommend the e-filing so you get an immediate security receipt showing that it's been done. And it also has some error checking to be sure that things have been done before it's accepted. So that's one level of error correction that you might find on the e-file, which you wouldn't get on a paper. Many people received an interest statement from the IRS. What is this and is this taxable? That's a great question. A lot of people are going to get these notices and maybe after they uh, after their heart slows down a little bit because they've <laughs> just gotten mail from Uncle Sam and, and uh, not the best agency to hear from. Uh, when they open it, they realize, oh, there's, you know, $13 or $25 or, or some clients a lot more. Um, it is actually interest that Uncle Sam is paying you on your refund. So last year, the filing deadline was changed from April 15th all the way to July 15th. So that's an extra three months. And folks who would have gotten a refund that maybe couldn't get to filing their return, um, maybe they've got two or three more months that Uncle Sam is going to pay them interest on their refund. And believe it or not, yes, that is going to be taxable to you. So just put it on the same line with all your other bank interest. It is taxable. For those of our listeners that had to work from home doing COVID, does this mean that they get the home office deduction? For those that are self-employed, independent contractors, those in the gig economy, they still get that deduction. It's actually a deducted business expense from their 1099 income that they would have like they would have any other operational expenses for their little business. However, those who were uh, W-2 employees, since the Tax Cut and Jobs Act in 2017, that has been suspended through 2025. So if you're a W-2 employee, you do not get any deductions for working at home. It is possible for the employer to reimburse you for certain home expenses. For example, if you put in high-speed Internet, if they supplied some equipment, things like that, they could reimburse you and you could get that additional benefit, but you yourself cannot deduct it. All right. That was a great question. If someone lost their job doing COVID-19 um, and now work for themselves, what should they watch out for? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, a lot of folks had to, to lose their W-2 job and, and join uh, what everybody's referring to as the gig economy. Um, 
you you still report your income very much the same way. For example, you'd be uh, if you're an unincorporated business uh, and you've created a schedule, what they call a Schedule C, totally unincorporated. Um, you'd put your income on the top, and then you'd have your deductions below it. You know, your office or your telephone, and, and uh, maybe if you're uh, a painter, then you'll have you know supplies that go along and, and get deducted. That is what we call your self-employed income. And from your self-employed income, you do want to file quarterly estimated tax payments. So try to determine what that income is on a quarterly basis and pay that in um, as well. So it's it's it, the IRS kind of doesn't want to give you a free loan, so they want you to pay in your money quarterly. Yeah. So. All right, then. And any final recommendations before next week's tax tips? We always recommend that you have a good relationship with your tax professional. And just like any other do-it-yourself job, we've all done things that we've regretted, not doing any better, taking the wrong path, using the wrong tool. And it's no different than doing your tax preparation. You need to have someone that knows what they're doing to assist you and advise you and be aware of the upcoming things that you may not have heard of otherwise and know how to take care of. Tax planning is a proactive, not a reactive tool. I would also add, you know, don't underestimate the power of really good record keeping. Um, you know, it, it's a good idea to have a separate bank account for your business, even if it's a gig economy and all you're doing is is something online or, or you're selling crafts at a craft fair. It's a good idea just to have a separate bank account for that. Um, that way, pay legitimate business expenses out of that business account and leave your personal account for those personal items. Don't try to commingle them. You'd be amazed at, you know, when sloppy bookkeeping often, often mit- you miss out on the deductions. So um, just watch out for that one. And we recommend that you don't wait till the last minute to ask for help. We're all very, very busy, and we tend to procrastinate things we don't want to deal with, and paperwork is one of them that most of us are not good at. So try to get your help early to find out what you need to know, what you need to keep, and then you don't have to scramble looking for information. You may have missed a deadline that you otherwise could have done if you'd known better. Uh, Maybe you want to plan a multi-year in terms of when's the best time to take a deduction for charity or declare income from the sale of a property. Um, So get this help on the front end and you'll find out that you'll save not only tax but penalties and interest by doing that. Uh, The COVID uh, experience has told us that we can't always plan everything in advance. We need to be reactive to what's going on and a professional can help you with that. You know, and just to echo that, you know, Mark mentioned before, really getting a relationship with a financial and tax advisor. There's a lot of free software out there, um, and maybe that worked in the past. Maybe your income was such that and it was simple enough for a W-2. You just went out and got uh, TurboTax or TaxSlayer or, or any of the other online services. But wow, things really have gotten complicated with with the Tax Jobs and Cuts Act. Um, excuse me, Tax Cut Jobs Act, uh, the CARES Act, the Consolidated Appropriations Acts, uh, and the new American Recovery Plan. Um, that That's a lot of information to absorb in a short amount of time. So what we find is, is building that relationship with a trusted tax advisor is well worth the fee. You know, even if you have somebody, uh, a neighbor or something, just, just take him out to lunch and, and, you know, you know, you're going to pick his brain a little bit and he's getting a free lunch out of it, but you know, you're, you're going to need some help this, this time of year. We saw that a lot with folks. Oh, I didn't get my stimulus. Why? Well, you know, had you been working with a proactive CPA, you know, they would have been on top of that. Um, there's, there's other situations where, you know, your, your income may have, may have messed you up or caused you to get something delayed. So now you're waiting a whole year you know, to get your stimulus that you could have been a little more proactive and and got that, uh, you know, just being a little smarter about things. So um, especially if you're going out for business loans, um, you know, it's always nice to go ahead and have a CPA in your back pocket. I want to thank Mark and Timothy for being with us on today for Tax Tips Tuesdays with Patrick and Rain CPAs. And if you have a question for them, give us a call here at the radio station, 904-301-9565, and we'll make sure that they receive your question and answer it on air next week. Sounds great? Awesome. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much for having us. And thank you for being with us. 
And thank you for joining us for Tax Tips Tuesdays right here on your Pure 103.7 FM, AM 1320, Jacksonville's Christian Station. 